you are likely to save 51 lakh rupees living and working in London. London, my second home. Having lived here for 11 years, I'm so, so, so excited to shoot this video. In this video, I'm going to share with you income in UK, expenses in UK, and your savings that can go up to 50 lakhs per year. If you like this video, if you find this video insightful, please like it and share it with your friends and family. Let's go. The very first thing we need to discuss is your income or your salary. And your salary may range from 30,000 pounds a year to 200,000 pounds a year, depending on what you do. For the purposes of this video and simplicity, I've assumed that you're a white collar worker. You're potentially working in IT, finance, and you know, something like that, okay? So I have assumed here that your income or your salary is 50,000 pounds per year. Okay, now why I've assumed 50,000 per year is because it depends on your visa categories. There are two types of visa very broadly and very quickly, okay? Number one is you might be coming to UK on specialist worker visa. Meaning for example, let's say you're working in India for a company called Infosys, right? And they send you here to work in UK for their client, okay? That used to be called tier two transfer visa, okay? So you're getting transferred from India to UK, right? In that case, there is a minimum law here that they have to pay a salary of minimum 42,000 per year, right? So now if you have, let's say four to five years of work experience, then you're likely to get 50,000 pounds a year. Of course, please negotiate when you come here, 50,000 per year is not a lot of salary. If your experience level is, let's say 15 years, then you might be getting 60 to 70,000 per year, depending on a various factors such as your skill, your company policy, etc. right? But for simplicity, I have assumed that 50,000 per year is what your salary is going to be, right? The second type of visa that you might be coming here is that if you are getting a job, from a company that is based in UK, so you're, you're being hired by a UK company, then the 42,000 per year limit doesn't really apply because you will be coming here on a second visa category, which is called skilled worker visa. In that case, what will happen is your minimum salary has to be 26,000 um, uh, pounds per year, right? So in that case, your salary might be lower than this. Again, depends on your skills and everything. But for the purposes of video, if you have four to five years of work experience, I think I would assume that you are likely to get up to 50,000 pounds a year. There are two main deductions that will happen from this salary, okay? Number one is the income tax, okay? Now, if you talk about income tax very quickly, very much similar to India, up to roughly 12,500, there is no tax. Between 12,500 to 50,000, there is 20% tax. And after 50,000 to 150,000, it's a 40% tax, right? So we are likely to pay in this example for 50,000 salary, we are likely to pay 7,486 per year. Okay, the second component is national insurance, right? National insurance is an additional tax that everybody who is earning more than a particular amount has to pay in UK, okay? So if you're earning salary 50,000 pounds a year, you have to pay national insurance, okay? The main purpose of this component is that when you grow old at 66, you will start to get state pensions, which will be roughly 186 pounds uh, per week, right? So this contribution is happening from your salary for your future pension, okay, that the UK will give it to you, right? Now for you to qualify for the state pension, you will have to be actually contributing for national insurance for 10 years. Again, there are many laws here, but let's not go into details of it. Let's just keep it short and simple and say that 5,301 uh, uh, 15 pounds is what you will have to pay annually. It's a mandatory one. Important fact here is that some companies who are transferring people to UK for up to two years, they do not need to pay national insurance because they know that you are coming here for a shorter period of time, right? So for example, when I came here in 2010, from 2010 to 2012, for two years, I didn't pay any national insurance because my company said to the UK uh, HMRC tax that you don't need to really pay taxes because I'm going to be here for a short term, right? With this, we can say that our take home salary will be roughly 37,198 pounds yearly, which will come out to be 3,129 per month, which is roughly in Indian rupees 37 lakhs, right? If there are two people you're coming here, if you're a working couple, husband, wife, working both, I've simply doubled these numbers here and we have got to 75 lakh rupees as earning yearly, right? When, if you're working in Scotland, then please be aware this, um, the taxes are slightly different, but overall, if you see it, it will be very similar to what you will get in England. 
this salary must be looking really great to you but wait 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 we have the expenses as well right so let's now talk about expenses before i do that if you're liking this video finding it useful please give it a thumbs up that will mean a lot to me let's now discuss the expenses living in uk okay so there are two main criteria for expenses right number one is whether you are living alone in uk or whether you are coming here and living with your family right number two is that whether you're living in london or whether you're living in rest of the uk because rent which is the major component of our expenses if you're living in london it is very 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 costly versus rest of the uk right if you have a look at this chart you will see that average cost of renting in london is very very high as compared to let's say in midlands second is edinburgh right so it depends on whether you're coming with family or living alone or London or rest of the UK. One of the biggest problem that I find in UK and I don't like generally is that the houses and the flats are really, really, really small, very, very tiny places. OK, but let's have a look at these numbers here. So if you are living alone and if you're living in London, my recommendation is start looking for a studio or a shared accommodation because you can minimize your expenses, okay? So 600 pounds per month, you can get a decent sharing place, okay, decent studio. When I came here, I used to rent a studio alone uh, as I came alone here, okay? the uh, If you're living rest of the UK, then your single accommodation or sharing accommodation will be roughly 300 pounds a month. These are all monthly figures, by the way. And then if you're living in uh, London with family, you are likely to get at least two bedroom house or a flat. You will have to shell up to 1400 pounds a month. If you're living rest of the UK, I have assumed here 900 pounds a month as your rent expense. Let me rub this out very quickly. Second item I want to talk about is groceries, right? Which is roughly your food and drink and other monthly expenditure, right? Now, in UK, you will get all Indian vegetables. You will get Indian mangoes, for example. You will get all sorts of rice, chawal, dal, spices and everything, right? Nowadays, even Baba Ramdev is exporting Patanjali products. So I've got a Patanjali product. So overall, I love UK because you don't feel like you're living outside UK when it comes to food and everything around it, right? In terms of expenses, if you're living single, 200 pounds, whether you live in London or rest of the UK, it doesn't really matter. 200 pounds a month is what you should provision for. And if you're living with family, 300 pounds a month is a good money to consider. Item number three is public transport or commute. Okay, London has a very good public transport system. Okay, um, metro stations, underground metro stations here are called tubes. You will see famous red London buses going out, trams, DLR. You've got all sorts of public transport systems here. What I've assumed here, if you're living single here, 100 pounds a month is good enough. Assuming you will work two to three days in office and remaining days at home and if you are family living then i have assumed 200 pounds which is per month roughly that you will have to spend on commute commute here is relatively costlier um, food here for example is relatively cheaper next few items are very very interesting if you look at these ones here what you will see is in the single living they are all zero pounds because if you're living in a shared accommodation or a studio flat, you are not likely to pay for electricity, gas, water, council bill and TV licenses and t TV and broadband, right? While if you're living with a family and you have your own flat or a house that you're renting here, you are likely to pay all of these. That is why when you're coming alone here, even if you're coming as a just a couple here, please spend some time living in a studio or a shared accommodation. It's very good bargain here in UK, right? Now, let me quickly explain to you from electricity perspective. Here, the winters are really cold. So electricity is consumed and your bills might go up to two times in winters, right? There is no air conditioning here. So therefore, you don't need to pay for air conditioning charges, right? Gas. Many of the flats and houses will have gas uh, triggered boiler system because it gets really, really cold here. So the radiators will be installed in the houses and flats so that you can keep yourself warm. I've assumed 30 pounds a month, which is very reasonable. Um, water, again, from a water perspective, uh, there are no tankies here <laughs> and the water is really uh, um, clean here. You can, in fact, drink the water from a tap water, right? So generally, you end up paying roughly 30 pounds a month for water charges, okay? 
Council bill. Now I want to talk about council bill here. So roughly 140 pound a month I have considered here, but different councils will have different bands as you can see, and different bands will have different pricing here, right? What you see here is yearly figures. I have now assumed 140 pound a month here. Generally the council expenditure is for things such as, you know, maintaining your uh, local area, they collect rubbish, they do recycling and a lot of other activities. That is why we have to pay council tax and in few years the council tax has been going up and up, right? Let us talk about the TV licensing. Now this is something unique, right? We don't have it in India at all, right? Here in UK, if you are watching any television programs, even through your laptop or your television, you have to pay TV licenses, which roughly is £12 a month, right? That is what we have to pay. Let us move to TV and broadband here. What you will see here, you get fiber optics and all sorts of broad broadband options here. And you will have to pay roughly, if you see, £50 a month for your uh, internet. Moving on to the next component, which is eating out, okay? London offers some really, really great cuisines from Vietnamese to Jamaican to Indian and everything in between, right? One of the interesting thing that I want to share with you is in London, you have a restaurant where uh, you eat in pitch dark, complete dark restaurant, okay? And there the food is served by blind people, okay? Because they want you to experience what it is likely to be a blind person, in fact, when you're eating food, right? How amazing is that? So anyways, eating out, I have assumed 50 pounds a month if you're single and if you're with family, 100 pounds, which is a good a good amount of money. The next one on my list is movies and attractions. Okay, one of the best thing I like about living in London is the attractions, the theaters, Royal Albert Hall, my God, you go there and watch a movie, it is an experience that you won't get anywhere. I'm not exaggerating it, okay? So for movies and attractions, I have assumed that if you're living in London or outside, you are gonna spend some money over it. So 25 pounds if you're living single, 50 pounds if you're living with family. This is a good enough money, and I think you need to go and explore what is the life in UK. So this makes a lot of sense. Moving on from a mobile bill perspective, uh, majority of the Indians, what they do is they go and buy Leica SIM. It's a prepaid SIM, 15 pound a month is what you will shell down for it. And you will have unlimited calls for India and you can talk from Leica to Leica freely unlimited and you get some limits on making UK calls, which is good enough. Okay, so that's your mobile bill. Next one is subscription. So if you will have Amazon subscriptions or Netflix subscriptions, I've assumed all of that expenditure because everything will get deducted from our salary. So we are planning it carefully. If so far you're liking this video, please give it a thumbs up. Moving on to the medical. So as such, National Health uh, services NHS is free you can get treated free here free of course no charges however if you need prescription you can't take antibiotics here without prescription not a pharmacist can uh, give you any type of antibiotics that happens in India if you want even uh, a, a very simple generic antibiotics you need to go to your uh, GP, general practitioner, they will have to write a subscription for you and then only you can get the medicines, right? So for subscriptions, you will have to pay some money and that is why I have assumed if you're living here, £10 a month is good enough money and £20 a month with a family is a good, good amount of money that we need to provision for, right? From a shopping perspective, in UK, there are two types of shopping avenues. You can go and do shopping in high streets. They call it high streets, which is like uh, shops and markets that we have, local markets uh, that we have in India. And you, of course, have shopping malls as we have again in India, okay? I've assumed 20 pounds if you're a single person per month. And if you're with family, 50 pounds per month, like for your shoes, for your clothing and everything else. Again, you, you can provision for 100 pounds, but I think I've gone ahead and assumed something which is very reasonable, okay? Comes for schooling. From a schooling perspective, schools are free here, right? So you don't need to pay really any money for schooling purposes, which is really, really great. With this, if we add all these expenses up, we are likely to get single person living in London, 1,040 pounds a month. Rest of UK, 740 pounds a month. Therefore, you can see that this is a good deal to not live in London, but you will miss out on some of the great attractions in London. Family living, if you look at it, 2400 per month. If you're living in London, this is where the most expensive uh, affair comes. And if you're living outside London, that will be roughly 2000 pounds per month from your expenses perspective. 
So after having talked about the income and the expenses, now let's have a look at net savings that you can withdraw while working in UK. Okay. So for single living person, if you see, you will end up saving roughly 2089 pounds a month if you're living in London. If you're living rest of the UK, you will be able to save roughly 2300 pounds a month, which is more than living in London, as we have talked about. And that will mean that 25,000 pounds a year or 28,000 pounds a year after deducting everything. And that will mean 25 lakh rupees uh, living in London and 28 lakh rupees living in rest of the UK if you are living here alone and working here in UK. So now for a family, if you look at it, if one person is earning in the family, then, and if you're living in London, you are likely to save 600 pounds, 650 pounds a month, which turns out to be 7,884 a year, and which is roughly 8 lakh rupees, 7 lakh 88,000 rupees per year you will be able to save. But if you're living in rest of the UK, not in London, then you will be able to save 13 lakh rupees, 88,000, which is 14 lakh, roughly 14 lakh rupees per year net saving if only one person is working. If a couple is working, which is more and more the case now, right? Working in living in London, you are likely to save 3,700 pounds a month, which is 45,000 a year, which is roughly 45 lakh rupees a year you are likely to save. And more importantly, if you're living in rest of the UK, you are likely to save 51 lakh rupees living and working in London. This is the net savings, not, you know, savings, which is before tax, right? How amazing is that? If you're liking this video so far, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments what was the best part of the video that you liked and found it insightful. Please share it with your friends and family. That will motivate me to come up with more and more videos, right? I now want to give you three or four other important considerations while living in UK. These are discretionary expenses. Not everybody would do them, but just in case you might have some queries about it, I'm trying to clear them here as well. So first one is car, right? If you want to have a car in UK, you can go for it. Just be aware of the expenses that comes with it. Insurance, car insurances in the very first few years is very, very costly here, 1,000 pound a year is what you need to provision for. Road tax you need to pay, which is roughly 250 pounds, depending on your car. Again, I have gone for a higher side of it. Servicing an MOT, what they call is very similar to what we have. Every year you have to go and get your car serviced here, 400 pounds, and that will come out to be 1,650 pounds a year. So roughly 1,65,000 per year is what you need to think about in addition to the car buying costs that I've not included here, right? But you get amazing cars here, roads are really great. So as a family, if you're coming here, having a car makes a lot of sense. And if you're planning to be here for a longer term, definitely, because during the winter period, you are likely to get limited in terms of movements, right? Second thing I wanna talk about the private school. So private schools in UK are very, very, very costly. If you look at the cost here, I've given you some indicative examples. So up to second class, is 17,000 pounds a year, yes. Up to fifth class, roughly 23,000 pounds a year. And from fifth class, 35,000 pounds a year. Lot of money when it comes to private school. Definitely, I personally don't see any value or little value for the money that you pay here. But yes, in secondary, if you're not able to get to good grammar schools, which is what are really outstanding schools in UK, then you you might think about spending this money, of course, if you're able to earn that much money. But a, another important consideration when it comes to schooling, okay? Third one is the holidays. So if you go on holidays within the UK, five nights generally is likely to cost you 1,000 pounds. If you do one holiday per year, you are going to spend roughly one lakh rupees. So please be mindful of that as well when you're planning your expenses. And lastly, when you come to UK for work, for example, and if you want to go back to India to meet your near and dears, then please provision for peak season four tickets, you are likely to get 3,500 pounds. Off season four people, you're likely to spend 2,000 pounds. So depending on when you're going to India, if you're going to India every year, you might end up spending two lakhs to three lakh rupees. Again, important consideration when it comes to overall looking at income and expenses. 
I tried in covering a lot of things in a very short span of time and I'm sure you will have questions. So please drop all your questions in the comment sections and I'll do my best to answer each one of them. If you also want me to make videos around how to get jobs in UK or anything around UK, please drop them in comments. I'll try my best to create more videos. If you find this video useful, insightful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to this YouTube channel that's how I know you're liking and valuing this content and I'll come up with more and more content. Until then, have a great day. Signing off. See you later.